Hi everyone, uh, welcome to part three of the videos, uh, video series explaining my journey through the process of uh, computer controlling my dome. And today I want to cover two topics. Uh, one is I want to show you the final solution for how I actually mounted the motor on a bracket to turn the dome, uh, because in the introduction I was unsure about how to go about that. And second topic is I want to talk about the position sensing, uh, the, the technique I'm going to use for detecting the position of the dome. OK, so let's get rolling and look at the motor. So this is the conceptual diagram that my good friend Mark Parrish came up with, Mark, who lives in Selsey, um, to mount the, the motor and the wheel to underneath the, the metal ring and to deal with the potential problem of the fact that we discovered that the ring does not remain exactly uh, horizontal. Well, it is horizontal, but it moves slightly up and down by a few millimetres. And this arrangement here on a pivot with the motor on a bar and uh, a, a rubber system of uh, like a rubber bungee here, providing a, a flexible force and allowing the wheel to move up and down, still providing a force up onto the metal ring. And so this is the uh, driving position and this allows it to be disengaged. So there is a, an arrangement here where we can push up here, stretch the bungees and the motor will be disengaged from the, from the, the metal ring. And so that's what I want. So now you've seen the principle, uh, you can see I made some uh, mock-ups here to prove that it would work. Uh, bits of metal I had, bits of wood hanging around. I made this system so that I could create this pivot and this did prove the concept worked. So this is all too flimsy. I ordered a little bit of uh, much more substantial metal and made the final solution. So let me show you that now. And here's the final result. It's a tidied up version of the prototype that I was just showing you. Uh, please forgive the uh, awful looking rubber bungee. It's the only thing I've got at the moment to try it out with. I'm on the hunt for some nice, much thinner bungee that I can wind around a few more times, make it look very neat. That looks absolutely awful, but it does work. Um, the brackets and the bits of metal that everything's mounted on is nice and stiff, and it's six millimeter aluminium the whole way. I was able to make this with just a hacksaw, a drill, and a file, basically. And that was all I needed to, to make this. So, and the nuts and bolts are all just bits and pieces that I've had hanging around for years. So let's just turn it on and away it goes. And the, the, the ups and downs of the ring will be taken out by the pivot. And that's looking quite good. Now it's squeaking and today is much cooler. The dome is running much stiffer than it has been in the last few hot days. So even when the dome is stiff uh, to push round, it still works. And of course, as I've explained, I'm going to get rid of this friction and if it can cope with this it will definitely cope with uh, the system as it's going to be. Okay so that's the motor and let's move on now to discussing the position sensors. Okay let's talk about the position sensing now. Now as I mentioned earlier I have already divided the dome up. Uh, these are just temporary bits of tape to show me the distances involved but I, I bisected the dome into 32 segments and so this uh, just shows me the kind of accuracy I, I want to achieve. I, I would obviously like to get less than that and I'll explain how I'm going to do that. But it, it's not critical. Uh, three degrees, uh, three or four degrees would be plenty of accuracy. But I've decided the way I'm going to do it is that, uh, as you can see underneath the, uh, the metal ring here, and let's say that marker there, if I had a white marker here and here and then if I used one of these little devices this here this here is uh, an infrared uh, sensor it's a little component costs about a pound uh, that has uh, an infrared LED emitter and it has a little opto transistor that detects the returning signal from a reflecting surface. So the focal point is is somewhere, uh, well, it, it's not important. It, it can be sort of just a few millimetres to uh, more than a centimetre and a half. And it will basically detect when there is some kind of reflecting surface 
reflecting the infrared back and it causes the little opto transistor to turn on. So effectively it's a switch. And when this thing is pointing at uh, blackness, then the, the little transistor is off. And then as the dome turns and a white strip passes in front of it, the transistor will turn on. So this gives an indication of, you know, where a, a white strip is. And if I use more than one of these things, then I can actually get more accuracy than shown here between these two points. So let me explain that. So Heath Robertson, eat your heart out. This is my prototype. In fact, it probably will become the final thing where I have arranged for four of these little IR reflector sensors to be arranged as a spacing such that when um, only one of them will be turned on at any one time. So as the dome is moving round, it will pass in front of number one. And let's say it, I'll pretend that I'm moving the dome. Number two will fire, number three will fire, and number four will fire. And then of course, number one will meet the next one. So they've been spaced so that only one is on at any one time. And so what I've done is I've effectively subdivided the 32 uh, sections into four. So that is 128. So I've divided the accuracy that I can detect the position to 128th of a circle, which is uh, under three degrees. And that will be absolutely fine. So what I've done is uh, I've brought all the wires out into this arrangement. I've uh, connected it to a 15 way sub D connector, which is gonna go into a little interface box where I will arrange for the very, very simple arrangement of resistors and power needed to, to, to make these things work. And I'll explain that now in some diagrams for you. I'll explain how each one works and uh, show you uh, how it is that uh, it can be wired up. Just to finish off this part three video, I thought I'd show you a few, or uh, well, a couple of circuit diagrams to show you how easy it is to uh, hook up and wire up these little IR infrared uh, reflector sensors. And here's a diagram just showing you what's required to connect up one of those four sensors that I showed you in the dome. Um, the QRB114 is the name of the device that I'm using. Uh, various manufacturers make it. Um, and all that's required really is to connect uh, the LED, the infrared LED, to have it on all the time. And it just needs a 220 ohm resistor with five volt supply. And that uh, provides uh, just the right amount of current flowing through the LED. And uh, when the photo sensor on the other side, the photosensitive transistor, when it detects the presence of the reflective surface as the dome goes round, then this transistor will turn on and cause this circuit, current in this circuit to flow. And the idea, of course, is to connect this to an input of the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi can detect when one of these devices has detected the presence of the white strip. 3.3 uh, volts is needed because that's the voltage you need for a Raspberry Pi input. So each of these channels needs three resistors to be arranged to be connected to that wiring harness. And next I'll show you the circuit I'm going to use to make a little interface box to do that. OK, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this circuit diagram at the moment. I will actually make a, a video about how I make this circuit, circuit and put it in a box so that I have a little interface box to connect all of those devices together and to feed them into the main control box. But this will be a separate little box, which uh, I haven't actually shown in the conceptual diagram so far. But uh, all you, what you can see really here is just um, it's going to be a small circuit board with a bunch of uh, screw terminal connectors around the outside and these uh, there'll be four of each of those three resistors that you saw in the previous circuit and additionally I'm going to well I've decided in my wisdom that I'm going to generate 5 volts and 3.3 volts on the little interface board rather than feed the 5 and the 3.3 up from the Raspberry Pi I thought I would just feed a simple 24 volt and ground 
input and I would generate on board with very simple little regulators the voltages I require. So this these connectors will connect to that wiring harness and uh, in probably the next video or maybe the next one I will demonstrate and show you how I've had the circuit board uh, manufactured how I've wired it all together and hopefully a demonstration of the whole thing working uh, well in terms of detecting the presence of the white strips at least so okay well that's it for this video thank you very much for listening